So Jordan Marshall says, Hey David, why do Muslims insist that the Quran is perfect from the time of Muhammad, and yet historically the Quran comes out the 8th century with changes, and the Hadith history say it's changed? So Anthony, why? Why do Muslims insist that the Quran is perfect from the time of Muhammad when the evidence says it's not? Well, I guess for the same reason convicts say they, they didn't commit the crime, <laughs> even though the evidence says they did. Uh, Muslims need to say that it's perfectly preserved in order to uh, keep up the charade. If they grant that it's been corrupted, then uh, they obviously have a problem. Uh, but I, I think part of what's uh, driving it is the is their peculiar version of inspiration. As Christians, we believe that the Bible was uh, inspired, which means that the authors of Scripture were supernaturally superintended, that God used them without destroying their wills or their personalities and so forth, but he used them to write what he wanted them to write. And then thereafter, God used normal means to preserve his word. You know, he's, he's guiding all of history, so... He can do things supernaturally. He can also use ordinary means. And through those ordinary means, there are uh, copyist errors that can creep in. And happily, there are ways to uh, sort out those sorts of mistakes. A lot of them just end up being uh, simple spelling mistakes or um, minor differences. Like uh, one of the peculiarities of Greek is that uh, when you when it mentions a name, it often puts the definite article before it, but we don't translate that into English because it doesn't make any sense to us. Uh, but for example, when Mark 1, uh, 2 says, as it is written in uh, Isaiah the prophet, it says, as it is written in the Isaiah the prophet. Uh, so in some uh, copies of the, the New Testament, you'll have the article dropped because it's unnecessary to the sense. And so those are the sorts of things that you'll see uh, differing among uh, New Testament manuscripts, and that doesn't really amount to anything. Uh, we still have the same message, and we're even able to discern by comparing and collating manuscripts uh, where some of these mistakes were made. Uh, but Muslims think that the Quran is Allah's eternal speech, and so they can't, in light of that, uh, you know, come to terms with the idea that there could be mistakes in Allah's eternal speech. I would, it would, uh, I guess in their minds, mean that Allah's stuttering or something, mm -hmm. uh, or somehow... Uh, uh, fumbling his words. And, uh, but also I think that part of what drives it is simply the apologetic uh, value they think it, it gives them. Uh, they think if they can claim the Quran has never had copyist errors, which we know it has, uh, then somehow that gives them a leg up on Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's kind of odd because, I mean, you can pick up, uh, I thought I had my Yusuf Ali here, but you could pick up Yusuf Ali's translation of the Quran and you can read him in footnotes making observations yeah. about... Uh, Quranic variants, and he's not even bringing up all of them. He's just bringing up a, a few here and there. Uh, but it's yeah, it's not I, like it's some yeah. And, and anyone who wants anyone who wants to check that get 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 the Yusuf Ali edition of the Quran where he he includes the footnotes. And go to chapter thirty three, verse six, because there's actually a verse there where Yusuf Ali apparently likes a variant better. In other words, if you if you Muslims don't know what we're talking about, there are variants in your sources. Um, and in other words, different Muslims had different, well, if you go back, different Muslims had in, in entirely different chapters in their Qurans. Uh, 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 Ubay ibn Qab had 116 chapters in his Quran. You have 114 chapters in yours. Abdullah ibn Masud had 111 chapters in his Quran. Again, you have 114 in yours. And these weren't random guys, right? These were uh, Ubay ibn Qab and Abdullah ibn Masud were two of the guys. Muhammad said, if you want to learn the Quran from anyone, learn it from these four guys. And those were two of the guys. And so Ubay ibn Kab also had additional phrases and so on. You know what his problem was? He had a great memory. Other Muslims would forget things and things would drop out. And Ubay would have such a good memory that he wouldn't forget it. And so later when Muslims are reciting the Quran in a different way, Ubay would say, well, no, this is the way Muhammad revealed it. And then he would be, they wouldn't like that. They would, they would get mad at him for having such a, a, a great memory. But um, yeah, so I, I would actually draw a distinction here between Muslim scholars and your average Muslim. Because your average Muslim, the reason he believes that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter is just that's what he been, he's been told all his life by his imam and his parents. That's it. It doesn't go any deeper than that. He didn't come to this conclusion after examining the manuscripts. He didn't come to this conclusion from 
going to the Muslim sources and seeing what they say about the, the history of the text of the Quran. He's just been told that. So your average Muslim who says this, he's not trying to trick you, he's not trying to deceive you. He really believes that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. But it's because he's been told a bunch of nonsense by his leaders. So that's a situation with your average Muslim. Now what disturbs me is the Muslim leaders who've read the same sources that, that, Anthony, that Anthony and I read, right? So your Muslim leaders who've read the Muslim sources, they know that entire chapters came up missing, that large passages came up missing, that verses were eaten by a sheep. They know that this is what your sources say about the history of its text, and yet they go on to tell people the Quran's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter, never a single change, not to a letter. And so if you've read the Muslim sources, you know this is a lie, and yet they continue telling your average Muslim perfect preservation. Why? Because as Anthony pointed out, it has apologetic value, right? This gives Muslims a false confidence in their book and allows them to go out to their Christian friends and say, oh, you see that? You Christians, you can go into any Christian bookstore and read a book about textual criticism. Now, why? Well, by the way, why is that? It's because Christians are honest, right? Christians are honest with the evidence. And they take the evidence seriously. And they do textual criticism to get back to the original reading. Um, but Muslims just ignore all of that and pretend that it didn't happen. And so this allows the Muslim to go and say, hi, you Christians, you see, you admit that you have textual variants. In Islam, there's never been a textual variant. And it's absolute nonsense. And yet Muslim leaders keep telling Muslims this. Why? Because it gives them a false confidence. Now, that, that, that has worked well for Muslims because you can go up to any Muslim and one of his first claims out of his mouth, Quran's been perfectly preserved. This proves that it's the word of God. And most Christians don't know enough to actually respond to that. But Muslims have set themselves up for a massive fall here. They've set themselves up for a massive fall. Because once you've built your case and people's confidence on a foundation of lies and outright deception such that anyone who spends five minutes actually examining this issue will realize that it's, it's, their heads have been filled with false claims, you've set yourself up for a fall. Because all we need, all we need is a well-informed group of Christian apologists to actually read what's in your sources and wreak absolute havoc on the false claims that you that you spread and now muslims are going to start to realize wait a minute my leaders told me all my life that the quran has been perfectly preserved and yet that's a lie if they lied to me about that what else have they lied to me about